Uh, good evening. It is uh, Wednesday, August 11th. It is 7.07 .07 p.m. This is a meeting of the Nahant Conservation Commission. Uh, the intent of this meeting is to put together um, conditions for the two notices of intent um, filed by Northeastern University. Uh, they're conditions under the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, subsequent um, denials will be issued under the Wetlands Protection Bylaw. So um, I had sent the commission some draft permit conditions uh, for the two applications, um, as well as the letter from the peer reviewer with his recommendations. Um, should we start with the CSI building? Sure. Okay. Um, so uh, the conditions were uh, construction phase reporting, where the applicant provides weekly status updates on the construction of the site. Uh, the reports would include um, construct ongoing construction activities, um, if there's any kind of a release, um, or erosion control issues with the BMPs, um, a monitoring and maintenance of erosion controls uh, throughout the site, um, and if there's ongoing issues with those, that the commission would um, <coughs> hire a third party <coughs> to do the inspections at Northeastern's expense. Um, the commission or an assigned representative shall have the opportunity to inspect the installation of stormwater management systems, including but not limited to bottom excavation, backfill material, system installation, et cetera. Um, that any field changes to the project must be submitted to the commission in writing for approval. Depending on the extent of the change, it would either be considered a minor modification or they would need to come back and amend their order of conditions. Uh, that final as-builts be provided uh, for the certificate of compliance, that the um, property follow the university's integrated pest management program, including the exclusion of pesticides on the property. Um, a couple of things that I thought about after that I didn't put on here was um, a requirement with regard to replacement of trees, um, that they be native, that they be drought, that all the landscaping be native and drought tolerant. Um, I don't know if we want to require um, a DBH equivalent for the trees. In the, in the buffer. I mean, does it, in if, they, areas. They, if they, if trees are taken down within our 100 foot buffer area, they should be replaced with the equivalent diameter right. multiple so, trees. At, at the meeting, they mentioned that, oh, we don't, don't worry, we're going to plant. Sorry. At the meeting, we're going to plant 200 trees, so we don't need to tell you how many were taken down. Well, most of the 200 are going to be above the geothermal wells, not along the proposed area of the footprint of the building. And they are definitely taking, well, I'm pretty sure they are, because they never would give us the, the data. But um, to the extent that they are taking down trees that are in, the, in our 100-foot buffer area, um, then they should be they should replace an equivalent diameter uh, another tree one and i don't know if we can do this or not but for both projects one of the most important trees on the property is the poplar tree that's in our hundred it's in the hundred within the hundred foot buffer of the wetland uh, it's 40 inches in diameter it shows up on the existing conditions maps and uh, during during the MEPA review they said well you know, we're going to do our best to not hurt it, but I would like to require, even though it's so, any of the drawings are not constructing near it, that they be required to put a one of those arranged snow fence uh, around the drip line of that tree. So there's no confusion, uh, as there has been in the past, where somebody with a backhoe goes where they shouldn't go by mistake and destroy it. And it should be the drip, the whole drip line of that. Yep, tree. we can definitely do that. And that would be in both projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely do that. Um, okay. 
Um, There's a question there. Hmm? So, uh, yes, tech, we don't have to take input from the public. So if it is super relevant to what we're talking about, yes. Otherwise, no. Did you, did you close the hearing last time? We did. Yeah, then you can't. We can't have any. We can't take any information in. Okay, so town council says that we actually can't allow any additional input because we closed the meeting at the last hearing. I, it turns out I was incorrect that we can't. Right, if the hearing's been closed, no information can be taken in. The hearing's closed, all testimony is out. We've done. We can't open it up for anything, unfortunately. Um, no, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, we, we can't take anything because the hearing's been closed. Okay. Um, so, additionally, I wanted to um, include a condition about the invasive, invasive Species Management Program that they had committed to. I wanted to make sure it was memorialized in the order um, that they will need to do that as um, as they committed to. Um, and the other thing, I have another tree-related one. Yeah. Um, in the the general notes on both projects, I guess it's maybe boilerplate, but. Um, it, they, they all state, uh, oh, come back. Uh, looks like in utility, the, the contractor will, uh, let me get this, let's look at the right page here, sorry. Before any trees or shrubs are removed, the con contractor shall arrange a conference on the site with the owner or owner's representative to identify trees and shrubs that are to be, to be removed as well as those which are to be protected. Do not commence clearing operations without a clear understanding of existing conditions to be preserved. Mm -hmm. Now is that another one that we, um, and again, it's above, and the one above it is all existing trees and shrubs to remain should be protected and maintained throughout the time of construction as specified and directed by the landscape architect. So if they're gonna hold a meeting with Northeastern, can we have a representative there? Yes. As part of that. So we'll have a condition for um, a pre-construction meeting regarding limit of clearing. Absolutely. So another one that I wanted to include was that all permits have to be um, have to be obtained before the start of work, and that includes a NIPTES um, construction permit. Because clearing more than an acre requires a permit from NIPTES. Requires a permit from who? The National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, EPA. Okay. Um, it's to control like runoff from construction sites. Okay, and then I also gave you guys a copy of standard conditions that I typically use for um, orders. It's basically, um, you know, don't, don't bury construction debris. Don't um, park machines in resource areas. Um, have spill kits on site in the event that there's an issue. Um, no stockpiling of materials inside wetland resource areas. Um, Do we have a notification procedure for spills? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about idling? In, in their MEPA, they claimed that they were going to uh, try to, uh, they were going to not have the, allow the contractors to idle for more than five minutes or unnecessary idling. Can we make that a more specific condition? 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't think we can, unfortunately. I don't think so. Okay. Does the town have a no idling? The state has one. Uh, I think it's the Board of Health that enforces that. I don't think we can, unfortunately. Okay. Um, does anyone else have any other concerns or conditions as it relates to the CSI project? I have a question. Yeah. So we talked that last time there was some back and forth about the 5,000 or more square feet in the LSCSF mm -hmm. area. And I, if I feel like it was brought up that um, we had different interpretations of that. Is there something we can put in that would, I mean, is there a way to clarify that? So they can't say, well, I interpreted this in this way, therefore we're allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. I guess that's, so because, I'm not sure what that would be, but. Yeah, so the 5,000 square feet was um, the bylaw. And since we denied them under the bylaw, that will be oh, one of the things in our findings, you. in our okay. denial, we'll, okay. we'll talk about thank you. the 5,000 square feet. I forgot that part. Appreciate it. Okay. Does anybody else have any? Let me just check my... Well, Tom asked for notification if there were a spill. Can we put a time frame on that as well so that it's not two or three days later? Yeah, within 24 hours. I would think they, everyone there has a cell phone. I would think a couple hours would be reasonable so that we can go see what happened. Okay, how many hours? <laughs> I don't know. I, it just seems reasonable that, no, yeah. you know. <clears throat> Who would they notify? Them? Would it be a notification of the police in the show or the DPW? Um. We're discussing who we should notify in the event of a spill or who Northeastern should notify in the event of a spill? I mean, I assume it would probably be me. <laughs> <laughs> or the commission. Because um, at DPW, what, they're not going to do anything. The police would contact me. Um, should we give a couple names of people on the board? I'd be happy to provide my number, and that way it isn't all on you. I would, too. Okay. Why don't we um, say that they have to notify the Conservation Commission within a certain amount of time, and then we'll give them some contact numbers that they can try. I don't want to put it in the order conditions. I don't want our personal That's fair. information right. yeah. out there. OK, so what do we think um, is a reasonable period of time? Again, not to, but everyone has a cell phone. So the minute something happens, I mean, and I'm not saying that the minute, but I would think within an hour or two it would be a reasonable time frame because the, well, I can't by the, by the end of the day. What's that? By the end of the day. By the close of business? Yeah. You won't have anything to see by then. Right. That's sort of the question. Well, this is the thing. How does it get you know, How do we make it an item that would be discussed at a job meeting? Uh, I mean, we could talk about whatever we want at a pre-construction meeting. But I would say that if you don't have it written down, that gives them wiggle room because it's not, you know, we can talk about it at a job meet, job site, and then they're like, well, we kind of forgot, or we whatever. Does their um, O&M plan have a SWIP? I don't. Because that will have all the requirements of their notification. So have you would look. only want to put in a notification requirement if it's going to be um, stronger than what's in the SWIP. What do you, I mean, what do you think a reasonable notification period is? Within 24 hours. Yeah, I mean, the way the DEP does it is there's, you know, there's the 24 hour, notif or the, well, there's two hour, 24 hour, 72 hour. Right. So um, they would have to follow that anyway. Um, and I think that I think when they do a notification, they, they have to notify the fire department and the board of health. Um, but if you want every single spill to be notified, if you want to be notified of every single spill, regardless of the size, meaning regardless of the two-hour, twenty-four-hour, seventy-two DEP regs, regulations, 
Um, I would do it within 20, I would say within 24 hours, every spill has to be, you have to be notified of every spill. Like for instance, when they did work on the uh, slip at uh, the wharf, they had a hydraulic line break and the hydraulic fluid was wrapped around the wharf and almost over to the Dory Club by the time I noticed it. And I wasn't checking all the time, it just happened to be part of my daily walk. And we were never uh, notified. And we were never notified. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just, uh, hydraulic lines breaking, every contractor will tell you it never happens, but it seems to happen a lot. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, we, they do have a plan that they're supposed to uh, comply so we, with. We were never notified about this canoe beach stuff. That's the issue. What canoe beach? The, they had a hydraulic oh, line right, on right. canoe. That's right. Why don't I check what the SWIP and O&M plan says? And we can say 24 hours, and then if we have a, when we have a pre-construction meeting, we can stress that we've had issues here before when you've done projects, so I would rec that we would recommend that they notify us immediately. And here's some people you can contact. Does that sound? I mean, I mean my point is that we get it into the record somehow. Um, okay, let's just say notification for now. Let me check what the plans say, and then we can, I can adjust it. But 24 would be the maximum. So if, it, if we minimize it, it would be more stringent. Is everyone agreeable to that? Okay. That, that just ra raises one other question. I mean, just in general, looking through like demolition conditions and everything that's in the NOI. It all says the contractor should be responsible for, as opposed to Northeastern's responsible for. And you know, I, don't, I don't know how to <laughs> so say, you know, you guys are the ones who are responsible, not the, you know. So I think that's just typical um, for plans because they're, mm -hmm. they're making, they're putting the plans together for the contractor, right? Mm -hmm. So. But they are the permittee, so the buck stops with them. So if the contractor does something they shouldn't do, we hold Northeastern responsible for that, and they, fi they figure it out with their contractor. OK. Anything else that we can think of? Um, is everyone generally comfortable with those? Okay. So why don't we do this? Um, why don't we vote on these conditions um, with the caveat that there may be additional <laughs> as we see fit? And then I will circulate those to everyone before it's issued so you can see if just in case we think of anything else. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then, do I hear a motion to vote on the conditions, um, the draft permit conditions, and then the standard conditions as discussed and outlined tonight? I so move. Thank you, Henry. Is there a second? Second. Alan, unfortunately, you can't. Second. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can't do it. Okay, never mind. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. So then let's move on to the conditions for the seawater intake system. Um, so these are a little more complicated because it's a lot of conditions surrounding the um, horizont horizontal directional drilling. So it's you know making sure that the erosion control barriers are in place to prevent um, to capture drill cuttings and fluids, um, collection and transfer to a watertight container of all cuttings, cessation of drilling operations if any materials escape the entry hole, um, delay of terminal breakthrough for as long as feasible, containment and removal of escaped materials. Um, possible deployment and maintenance of a full depth silk curtain around the barge, 
that's something that we need to think about because they often will drop a silk curtain off the edge of the, the to surround the work area that has pros and cons. It disturbs the bottom, but it also prevents um, material from leaving the work area. So I don't know if that's something we want to do or not. Um, something we can think about because it disturbs, you know, basically it's weighted down to the bottom, and so it disturbs the surface of the, the floor of the ocean. But it also, the intent is to prevent construction materials or oils or dredgings from leaving the work area. And I, I think in general it's all cobble in that cove at the bottom, mm -hmm. so a disturbance would be, you know, it's rock. So it, to me, it seems like if the curtain went all the way down, it would be not the same as if it were landing on sand or, yep. or eelgrass or something like that. I mean, I'm sure it'll, there's something growing on the cobble, maybe, potentially, but um, I would think that that would uh, be less uh, intrusive than a sandy bottom. Okay. I'm, I'm going to add a, a little later one of the conditions I'd like to see added, which affects this is that the lobstermen uh, have told us that the lobster, young lobsters are there, and so work prior to the end of September has a high risk of hurting the okay. hatchlings. So if we can put a condition in that this should occur after uh, that period, then this, obviously the silt fence will have less uh, damage. So what are we talking about? Is, I mean from what to, until September? No, February? after September. Yeah, but what, February to September, June to September? Yeah, September to whenever they're stopped because of the next one. We may have to get an input from a lobsterman. So they couldn't start before, they couldn't do the drilling until after September. Right. And then they'd have until. So typically we give like a period of like, you know, when it's winter flounder, they can't do it from like February until. I guess it would be, they, they can do it between right. October. Yes, and so February or January, yeah. Okay. I don't know if we're allowed to ask the public. We have one expert here. No, we can't. Okay, but I believe it's. Uh, I am sure so. I can Google it and figure that information. It's, it's, <laughs> we're talking about lobsters. I'm sorry, I can't hear very well down yeah. here. Yeah, it's hard to hear. Yeah. It's lobster. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Young. Yes. From when until September? We, we can't. We can't. We can't. We can't. We can't risk um, any any attack on the permit. So, so I'll, the I'll Google it, or I'll ask um, DMF, Division of Marine Fisheries. They will have the answer to that. But we can certainly have an in-water work restriction. Um, I, I think the silk curtain is a positive thing, but if people had concerns about it, I was I'm not married to it. No, I mean that's what I thought. If, it, if they can do this after the lab. Lobsters are down there. Then it would they have. It's only have less. The silt is even a better idea. Cause you're okay. Not messing up something growing. You know that's mm -hmm. actively hanging out down there. Okay. Um, so implement implementation of a drill fluid containment. Oh, I wrote and containment twice. Containment and contingency release plan. Construction monitoring, if deemed appropriate by the commission. The name of the monitor must be provided to the commission and approved seven days in advance of the commencement of work. Construction phase reporting, excuse me, similar to that of the CSI. Um, public disclosure of the intake system operations. Um, they had said in the previous meeting that they can provide a dashboard that's yeah. publicly available um, so people can go log on and see what they're pumping. Um, so. Uh, prior to activation of the seawater intake pumps, the applicant shall provide the commission with the following. A report detailing the features of the public disclosure mechanism shall be provided to the commission for approval, and the approved public disclosure me mechanism shall be in place. Um, I'd also, I think I want quarterly flow updates for the first year or two, and then after that, annual, just so that we can see that they're pumping at the rate that we you know, and that, and that's that. one of the things, I mean, it's nice to have the monitoring, but somebody's got to monitor it, monitor it. So I yeah. think also the reporting and it, it would seem like they should notify us immediately if they exceed 600, you know, there's 600 gallons per hour is what the thing is designed to do. 
So, so could, yeah. As part of this, can we require them to immediately notify us if they exceed that? So here's the thing about the pumping. We approve 600 gallons per whatever, gallons per minute. It is not a consistent 600 gallons per minute. So depending on the tide, they're pulling more or less. They have to, the pumps have to work harder because of the way the tides are working. So it is not 600 gallons per minute all the time. So sometimes it might be 610, other times it might be 580, but the average is 600. So that's where the 600 comes from, is that the average, when they're not working against the tides, is 600. So that might be slightly deceptive if I don't think it would be an accurate representation of the pumping. Well, uh, but then also, what would notify us if they put a bigger pump in? We would, I mean, we can specifically state that this is your permitted pumping rate. Any changes there too requires approval from the Conservation Commission. Okay, we can add that. Do we want to put something in there about? Um, Need your mic? <laughs> I can't even hear you. You talking about? Do we want to put something in there about the um, the outflow? The water they're pumping out has to be within a certain like monitoring the temperature of that water because I know there are regulations around that, but they claimed before that that slipped through the cracks. Um, Is there a way we can have that disclosed as well? I don't know. It makes sense to me. I mean, for many years they never did. So I don't know if their system is able to do that. We can require that. I mean, that volume of water doesn't, I mean, they showed the, they showed the calculations that it doesn't change the outfall temperature enough to fall outside of what's reasonable according to EPA. But their system may have a thermometer at the outfall, and they may know what that is, and we can just require that as part of the reports. I mean, I think it's require it, period. There's, yeah. Technically, there's no reason they can't have a thermometer out there. I mean, all those years they didn't do it. I mean, I ended up talking to an engineer from elsewhere at Northeastern University that was going down there and doing those measurements for something else unrelated to the, the Marine Science Center, but he was going there taking those kind of measurements, you know, just ran into him, chatted with him on the beach. So I guess the question ago, is, so. what's an acceptable tolerance level, a change in how much? I mean, if, if it's a 10 degree change from what they say it's gonna be, is it a four degree change? Are we regulating outside of our purview? Um, it, usually this is a EPA permit for an outfall like this, except theirs is too small. They're not, they're pumping, mm -hmm. they're not pumping enough. So it, they don't have to get one. I think it's a million gallons a day requires an EPA permit. And since they're under that, they don't have the same requirements that most systems have. Well, we, I mean, there could certainly be a difference, a temperature difference between what's in the water outside the pipe and what's coming out of the pipe. And if it's more than I mean, they've said it isn't going to be any, you know, measurable. It's only going to be hundreds of degrees. It's not going to be, you know, if it's more than five degrees, they should report it. Yeah. Amy, do you think that's something we can? Yeah. I, I don't think there's a problem with having a thermometer. And no, uh, that seems completely reasonable. I mean, can we set a variation temperature that after which it needs to be revisited? I mean, if they're saying it's going to be negligible. If, if it ends up consistently that it's five degrees difference, then there's an issue that needs to be correct and that is a concern yeah so is that an okay thing yeah to, okay and they need to disclose that in the same way that they would they're the ones that presented it that it would be negligible right okay. so they have to prove that it will be it negligible is. yeah okay maybe five is too big <laughs> it, i think it is yeah, frankly it's too. <laughs> i mean i remember in the, fr the yeah. first meeting that we that i attended about this project it came up that it was supposed to be within something like two degrees, and it was actually nine degrees warmer, the water that was going out. I'm not sure if I have those numbers exactly right, but that stuck in my head. And so I think, I don't know, is there a way we can research this and add the actual 
I can talk Very to the EPA. Easy. So, I mean, they don't just need an outfall time. They need an intake and an outfall temperature so that we know what the variation is. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier that there's a, the EPA, EPA regulates a million gallons. Could we hold them to that same standard? I mean, that, there's some science behind that, I would assume. So it shouldn't be, whether it's 600 gallons an hour or a million, the temperature shouldn't really matter. matter. Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's per day. I think okay. it's, yeah, but I think for a million gallons a day, it's like a 10 degree delta cha change in temperature. It's a lot. Because really? I worked in, on the UMass Boston project and it was like 10 degrees or something. And so that was okay. But huh. so I think we, um, why don't I go back and look at what they told us it was going to be? And then we can figure out what a fair variation from that is. I can talk to EPA and see. Okay. okay. Thank you. But we'll have some kind of a condition to that effect. Okay. Um, so, in addition to the ones we talked about, um, protecting the drip line of the 40 inch poplar, we can include that. Yes. Um, in both. In water work, t time of year work restriction, um, specified the approved pumping rate and the intake and outtake temperature. I guess I wonder too if, I mean, if we're addressing the lobster hatch, hatching, should we be addressing other species as well? Um, I don't know that DMF identified other species of concern there. Um, I can check and see. Okay. Oftentimes they'll want a condition about time of year for winter flounder, for example. Right. Um, so we can see if they had any um, time of year work restrictions. Okay. Um, anything else? I have a question actually on your, um, your draft where can, I just, I'm not, I'm not understanding delay of terminal breakthrough for as long as feasible. Yeah. Can you just explain that? So when they're doing directional drilling, they start mm -hmm. at one end. And so, you know, you could easily just pop oh, through okay. to the other side quickly, but then Got a it. lot of the material ends up Got through it. the Got other it. side. So to kind of slowly do it so that material comes out one end and it's more manageable. I was reading it as a time delay, not a distance oh. delay. So that's why I was confused. I get it. Thank you. And then we'd attach the standard conditions to this one also, in addition to these. So an another one, um, when, I, when I, in their NOI, they included a copy of the previous NOI for their seawater project at the beginning of 2000, um, roughly 2000, 2009, no, it was 2009, yep. something like that. Anyway, included in there was, I believe, uh, they were required, not by us, but one of the other agencies, that they had to provide 30-year uh, easement along the prop allow public access around the beach for 30 years. So 10 years of that has gone by, and it was based on the fact that they were utilizing underwater resources. Um, so it, as mitigation to some of that, they were did this 30-year so my question is, can we extend it by 10 years since it's 10 years later? And um, they're using more of the seabed than they used before. Uh, you know, and they signed a document that gave that, but it wasn't to the town. I mean, it was a, it was a federal, I believe federal. Uh, it's probably chapter state. 91. Yeah, does the chapter 91 license yeah. access Horizon like that? Yeah, the, the chapter 91 license covers that. But if they're doing, they're going to need to go to chapter 91 if they're, for this project. So we'll, we'll, we can have a condition about other permits. Chapter 91, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I don't know if they need to go to them or not. They probably do under a four. Well, but they're doing work below mm -hmm. mean high Might tide. not. But definitely chapter 91. So, so they'll handle that, the public access. That, that's really not within our jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But we can ask for copies of the approvals. Yep. Definitely. And then ask that it be extended, I mean, that it start over. I mean, it seems like the 30 years ought to start over now. We can talk to Chapter 91 about okay. that. 
Um, I think we should specify, just so there's no question, I know it says it on the plan, removal of all old, old pipes mm -hmm. and, and anchors. I know it's on the plans, but just so there's no question. Um, hey, oh, I, there, I mean, I, yeah, we don't, uh, we, we still have not, re we haven't received a complete set of all the plans. I mean, they've modified them and then we've, we've gotten this modification or that modification. I, yes. I mean, I went through the list of all the ones, you know, the, the front of the uh, seawater project listed, the front of their charts listed all of the, the different exhibits that were provided. And some of the, a lot, you know, some of the major ones have been changed and we've gotten soft copy or yes. hard copy, uh, but we don't have a complete set. So I believe um, Niche Engineering provided a copy of every single document they've submitted today, both hard copy and on a thumb drive. So, um, so we're still waiting on updated docu all the documents from um, Pear and Epsilon. I requested a hard and soft copy of every single thing they submitted to the Conservation Commission for our, for our file. But that leaves it upon us to go f look at every single one and figure out which was the last one. I have the latest version. So, uh, oh, so in, the, in the approval, it will reference the plans with the most re recent revision date. Okay. And that will be the guiding document for the but, project. But will they assemble them so you have that? I, mean, I have it. How many oh. sets did they send? I asked for one. I have two of the plans for the most recent the most recent submittal for both projects. I asked for those for the last meeting. And then I, I, I'm anticipating an appeal. So I asked for a full copy of the record of everything they've submitted because I think it's, it's been convenient for them to provide things electronically for the peer review, but um, it's unfair to ask the commission and the town to print out all the documents that have been submitted. That's an unfair burden to the town. So they're providing that to us all in one place, electronic. As well. Yeah, this. I mean, that's the that's the seawater. That was the cover sheet on the seawater one we re received initially. Yeah. And went and went through, and most of the EX ones have. Well, not all of them. Existing conditions was not done. Yeah. Um, so I have the most co recent copies of the plans. Those will be the ones that are referenced in the order. Um, and then we'll have probably, I'll put together a list of other documents as references um, because there's, there was so much information submitted. And what about the, the commitment for the hatchery as part of the seawater project? So their statement at the meeting was that if we don't have both, they aren't doing it. So I don't think we can condition it. I mean, so they, so Northeastern said that if we don't get the building and the seawater system, we're not doing the hatchery because they need the, they need, you know, they want the new intake, but they need the lab space in the new building okay. to be able to facilitate the hatchery. So I don't think we can condition. But that was their mitigation. I mean, that was their... MEPA mitigation. But it for... also doesn't talk about it in their notices of intent. They didn't offer it. Oh, they didn't in their notice? Yeah. Oh, okay. We talked about it in MEPA. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so we can't require no, it. No, because they would have to come back yeah. if they wanted to do it, I think, depending on how they're going to do it. Um, what, what, what was their plan for it? I think it's going to be self-contained within the new building. Oh, then they, yeah, right. then it has nothing. We yeah. can't do anything with that. So we can't require it. So again, it wasn't part of the notice of intent applications. Just like, like um, in the CSI building, they talked about the invasive species management. So that was included in the, in the application. And they were pretty clear about the fact that if they don't get both, they're not going to do the lobster hatchery. So we can't condition it. It wasn't something that we all agreed on. If we um, include it as a condition, they're going to appeal it to DEP. 100, a guarantee. Yeah. 
So I don't think we want to do that because then we lose control of the project. Or maybe we do. And we can be, <laughs> it can be someone else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any other? Anything else? This is not, does not have to be the final version. I will put it together. If we think of anything else, I'll send it out to everybody. If you have anything else that comes up, that's okay. We can add it. And my intent is once we have a final version, I'm going to send it to Northeastern so they can see what, um, what we're going to do. And if they have any concerns that are reasonable that perhaps we can tweak a little bit to clarify, not to change, to clarify. Um, because otherwise they're going to appeal and I don't see any value in that. I had, I had already sent these, I sent these today to Northeastern. I said this is what we're talking about generally. This is the direction we're going and they didn't have any concerns. They thought that it was fair. So, just everybody. Does that sound good to everyone? This is not the final, your final opportunity. This, this, this is the 21st day. No, we met on the 28th. Oh, okay. I know, I panicked yesterday too. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I have you on my calendar for the 21st. <laughs> it's next Wednesday. Okay. Okay, so um, do I hear a motion to um, include these conditions as discussed, both the um, draft conditions that I put together as well as the standard conditions? As discussed this evening. I move. Thank you, Ian. Is there a second? Second. I mean, if you're, if you're not comfortable with them, we can talk about more things. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Oh, Henry, you don't get to vote. <laughs> okay. All right, so I will put these together and I will circulate them to you probably this weekend. We have to issue it next Wednesday. Okay. Next Wednesday is the 21st day, so it has to be on or before that. Um, so I will, I'm gonna have to get everybody's signature after we draft it. Um, so we don't have a lot of time, unfortunately. Um, and then we're meeting next Wednesday to discuss the, the items what were on the regular agenda. And my understanding is that Northeastern is resubmitting their certificate request for certificate of compliance for the Canoe Beach project. Revised. Oh, they have. Great. They're, that's their plan. That's their plan. That was going to be my question. Yeah. They, um, agree that perhaps they could rewrite it. Um, and I'm going to meet with um, Bob Lambert to discuss um, doing maintenance, walking and restricting and mowing, et cetera. Great. OK. Can't take questions or comments. I don't, it's, I don't know if she can answer questions either. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. She would like to ask you a question. So we cannot take you, you, I know, you I are, know. you are jeopardizing your decisions that you're making tonight if you take comment. A question is a comment. Okay. Um, if this meeting is held that it is in violation of the open meeting law, this meeting didn't happen. And therefore, these decisions are not going to get issued in time and they are going to go straight to DEP. So, so it, it, it's very, very serious that we, we not take any comment, questions, testimony, because the, the record has been closed. So, so there's nothing. If we, if I put together the conditions and circulate them and we don't reply all, I mean, if somebody else has something they want added, can they directly reply to no, me? No, they can't, you can't add anything after tonight because we're deliberating on the decision. Anything can be, can be cleared up, can be um, clarified, um, you know, things like that. But. Um, Really, nothing. There, there, no new subject matter can be added to a decision after tonight. Really, but clarification of the things we've talked about yes, is okay. definitely, okay. and that's very, very common. Okay, I think we've covered most topics, so I think we could things can be tweaked yep. as necessary. Yep. Okay, all right. So, um, do I hear a motion to close the meeting? Thank you, 
Tom, is there a second? A second. Thank you, Mark. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we'll see. So next Wednesday is our next meeting. It will be via Zoom. Okay. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock is our new meeting time. Yay. Yes. So did you discuss um, findings for denial? I was going to write it and issue it. Okay. We don't have to deliberate on it, right? You don't. Okay. I was as long as everything that was... Um, as long as all of your um, findings in the denial were discussed at the hearing. I think we I'm covered sure everything were. at the last meeting. Okay. We so don't, we don't need to discuss it tonight. I mean, do you want to? What? I'm. I was going to write what we talked about at the last meeting. What our concerns were. I can send it to you guys before we issue it. But I think we've covered yeah. everything. I, I know that I. I did watch the last meeting, and I know that you guys did. We're pretty thorough, yep. I think. You really were. Between us and comment from the public, I yes. think we oh. covered everything. So I don't think we need to. You can, I will send them to everyone to look at. Okay. All right. Thank you. We'll see you guys Wednesday on Zoom. All right. Meeting is closed. Yes. Great, we can look at that letter, because that letter was submitted prior to I have the letter that you gave yeah. me at the last meeting. So that would, you can definitely look at that. But nothing else. Yep, I have it, yep. In you got to sign it. You just got things to sign it. Thank you, guys.